This is Soul Knowledge, Air Jordan 11, told from a new perspective, shot live in Jack Lemkes, Cape Town, just after the launch of the Air Jordan 11. This is something different, and let's get into it. Welcome back to Soul Knowledge, the home of the sneaker story and the home of sports culture insights. I'm your host, Bernie Wickham, and I am the sneaker evangelist. Now, there have been many different stories told about the legend of the Air Jordan 11. So many stories about inspiration and the way Michael Jordan had preferred it, the way Tinker Hatfield had wanted the shoe to be designed. But tonight's angle is going to be told from a completely different perspective. And it is from the perspective of what the sneaker means within the timeline of the entire Air Jordan series. Let's get to understand that a bit better. The biggest thing that set the Air Jordan 11 apart from all of its predecessors is that Tinker decided to retool the thinking around the Air Jordan 11 completely. When he looked at it, he says, we need to create a shoe that is lighter than its predecessor. And as a matter of fact, it has not been constructed like any other Jordans prior to it. Now, obviously, the one that I'm holding is the launch colorway. This is the iconic Concords. But for the rest of this episode, I want to be focusing on the breads, which is this colorway over here and has probably been one of Jordan's biggest and most anticipated releases for 2019. Here's a quick summary of what Tinker was thinking about as the shoe was constructed and what sets it apart from every other Jordan prior to this one's release. This is how it started. Having a look at the outsole midsole combination, most importantly is that Tinker had steered away from the traditional polyurethane that had been used in so many Jordans before. Now remember I spoke in the midsoles episode about polyurethane, that it is a material that is exceptionally robust. It can take a lot of pounding from a basketball player with those big bodies. But, I mean after about 10 plus years it does begin to, to, to fall apart and crack. But this one's quite interesting because this is a compression molded EVA midsole or what Nike refers to as Phylon. This is commonly used on running shoes. Now think about that. With a running shoe, it reduces the weight, but just means that the shoe itself just feels a lot lighter when compared to any other polyurethane shoe which had come before it. The second piece is that this is the first basketball shoe to actually contain a patent leather within the upper, um, which, which immediately created a, an aesthetic that had not yet been seen before on court. Such a glossy look was a very new feature for, for a basketball shoe. But what was most important was that the whole shoe was not decked out in thick leathers, that tumbled leathers, that although they are robust, they do add to the weight of the shoe. In this case, Tinker looked at a nylon construction referred to as a ballistic mesh. This is probably the most interesting piece of the shoe because ballistic mesh is actually a product created by DuPont in World War II which assisted people flying in aircraft and prevented them from um, the shrapnel that would be hitting them. So it was a highly robust and protected uh, soldiers in World War II. But that same kind of thick nylon mesh is now put on the upper of the shoe. So yes, dramatically reduces the weight, but increases the support and kind of does the job that leather does, but in a lighter statement. Okay, consider this as well. The lacing system, all the way up the upper on both sides, works like a rib cage connected to the lacing. So as you lace it up, you get immediate stability with both the lacing. You can see that this aggressive lacing is stitched to all of these eyelets with the ballistic mesh at the top. So understand the idea over here. Every form of engagement to get the shoe to be lighter than anything else before. I mean, Tinker literally just broke the mold in his thinking. The shoe is lighter than any Jordan prior to 96. Um, it is the highest tech and it is the first time that the shoe has introduced a carbon fiber plate into that midsole outsole. And it also has a full length zoom air cushion in it. All of these things add to a complete revolution in the way that Jordans have been constructed. In some interviews revealed by Tinker Hatfield, he also shared that this is actually his favorite of the Air Jordan series. So, enough respect to the Jordans, and more specifically the 11s. 
There's a reason why people have looked forward to them. There's a reason why the shoe has set itself apart from anything else that had ever been seen by Jordan in that period. And from this point onwards, carbon fiber became a very common place within the genealogy of the Air Jordan 11. The reason you need to have the shoe is because I believe that your collection would be incomplete without a bred Jordan. And especially if you're rocking the Concord as well, you've just completed the set really, really nicely. I must tell you, I'm so blessed that I've got them on feet. I'm so blessed that I can speak into them and just have the opportunity to just walk through, talk through and let you understand why the Sinka is as significant as it is. In today's sneaker world, it kind of gets lost in the crowd, but I need you to imagine the years 95 and 96 when this came out, what this meant, why it was so progressive. And that's the things that keep putting the Jordan brand on top of the mantelpiece over and over. And still to be reissued and be used as a performance sneaker at this point in time shows its relevance. So if you didn't get a pair, I'm really sorry for you. Let's see what the rest of the year holds, maybe next year. But um, this has been special and this has truly been a reason to believe in something significant. So did you get a pair? Holla at me. Let me know.